Mm, let's welcome Natalia Parkins from University of Minnesota for the uh, next talk, and she would be talking about disordered in ketiospin liquids. Natalia, I'll give you a warning at 35, and then we wrap up in five minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to once again thank the organizers of this uh, meeting to organize it and give me the possibility to pre uh, to present our work, and also to host my two students who are sitting probably there. It's great, uh, and I really hope that next time I will just repeat what Takashi said that I will be able to come. I have never been in India, and it's my dream. So next time I'm certainly coming in person, not in two D. Okay, with that, I will talk about uh, disorder in the ketiolic spin liquid, but basically the idea is to discuss how two type of disorder, the intrinsic disorder, because spin liquid is not order state, and some extrinsic disorder, how uh, they interplay and can we get some interesting physics out of this. And I will use ketiolic spin liquid as a, back, as a playground because once again is, uh, one of the very popular spin liquid nowadays and with possible realization. And second, because we can analyze a few things uh, more or less exactly in this case. Okay, so uh, this is the start. As I said, we are considering disorder upon disorder. And uh, the first prototype of uh, spin liquid was proposed by uh, Anderson in 1973. And that is the resonance valence uh, bond state. So basically the idea is that you can have a model in which the ground state will be a superposition of spin singlets. In this case, it's a triangle lattice or some dimers. And uh, you can have in some models only nearest neighbor spin singlets covering a uh, triangle lattice or any other uh, lattice. Oops, but it can also Sorry, uh, before I go back, just one second. Uh, no, it's only go, go story. Just one second. Uh, so basically, the idea is that this uh, the state is not a product state, but a superposition state, and to some extent. Uh, this is kind of the second and maybe more informative uh, definition for the quantum spin liquid. This is the state which doesn't break uh, any symmetry of the Hamiltonian, does not order, and therefore it's it's disordered state, but also it cannot be written as a product state. Uh, once we try to realize uh, any state of matter in real materials, we always meet with some extrinsic disorder. And this extrinsic disorder can come in all possible forms. It can come in the form of the vacancy, some defects. It can be dislocation, uh, some domain walls, whatever. So it's just like many, many different type of defects. And the question which we will try to answer in this talk is uh, when these two type of uh, disorder meets, what happens? And as I said, the playground which we are going to use is the uh, guitar of spin liquid. I uh, I will try to avoid the introduction of this guitar spin liquid because I know by now uh, many people know too many details about this kind of seemingly simple model. But just to set the notation, uh, guitar model was proposed by Alexei Kitarev in 2006. And this is the model on the honeycomb lattice, like this, where each side has three nearest neighbor, and on each bond only one type of spin interacts. So it's a bond-dependent Ising type interaction. And what is important that this model is exactly uh, solvable, and it comes from the fact that on each of the plaquette you can define uh, an operator, a plaquette operator, and all these quantities commute with the Hamiltonian, so they're all conserved uh, quantities, and that is, uh, and they also commute with each other. So uh, this is uh, the reason behind the exact solution. The way how Alexei Kitarev saw this model is by reproducing, uh, representing uh, spin uh, operators with the help of uh, Majorana fermions. And again, uh, already from the classical point of view, we see that in order to satisfy, we cannot satisfy the interaction of, on all the bonds. So 
basically uh, in the simplest way we can think about the state as like different diamond uh, covering of the lattice, all of them has the same energy and we can form a state which is the superposition of this diamond covering where uh, we uh, put on each point the spin according to uh, its interaction. Uh, what is important is uh, it is exact uh, quantum spin liquid and we know what is the ground state. The ground state is when all the parquet operator in the system are equal to one. But as long as we think about this in terms of the uh, spin degrees of freedom, it's kind of difficult to visualize what is the state. And this uh, Majorana terminal representation actually helps to visualize it. So in uh, Kitaev uh, spin liquid, uh, the spin flip or the spin excitation creates a pair of flux like shown here and Majorana terminals. So basically this is a picture where we have some uh, excitation which is in the form of zero flux and some excitation which is in the form of Majorana terminals, itinuant Majorana terminals, which is uh, artistically shown here. Okay, so uh, for uh, the remaining of my talk, what I will need is uh, to uh, define some of the technical things. And we will talk about different type of the gaps. So as I said, in the ground state, spin, uh, Kitaev spin liquid has a zero flux sector, but we can still excite uh, fermions. And basically we can define the fermionic excitation within the same uh, flux sector. But we can also go from one flux sector, for example, we can go from the zero flux sector to the two flux sector, and that will already cause uh, the energy. And then in this two flux sector, we again can define what is the fermionic excitation. So schematically, it's shown uh, here on the right of uh, my slide. So within each flux sector, we can define what is the fermionic gap. So in this case, that would be this gap. Uh, but we can also uh, define what is the excitation between uh, the energy of the states, and we will call this the flux gap. So this is uh, basically uh, the phase diagram for the Kitaev model. For, uh, in the Kitaev model, we have a uh, different type of interaction, Jx, Jy, and Jz on uh, different bonds. And this triangle, which is often called as a Kitaev triangle, shows the distribution of the fermionic gap. And we know that if we are in the isotropic uh, case, so when all couplings are equal to each other, then we are in the gapless spin liquid and this all black triangle correspond to the gapless spin liquid. And then the gap opens when we are going to uh, the anisotropic Kitaev spin liquid. And then uh, we can also uh, compute the two flux uh, gap. And you see that this two flux gap, so the excitation between this state and this state, it actually shows uh, different behavior. So it maximum value uh, when we have isotropic interaction and then it effectively goes to zero when we go to the corner of this trap. That's basically the technical slide which will help us to discuss the rest. And another important thing, we will be also interesting in the uh, finite temperature behavior because uh, Kitaev uh, spin liquid has a very particular type of disorder, which is called the thermal disorder. Once the temperature is growing, then uh, the flux, uh, the fluxes become populated, and that is in two-dimensional lattice happen as a crossover. And then basically above a certain energy scale or temperature scale, which we call T low, we have a soup of these uh, flux fluxes, and then we have this. Uh, excitation on top of this. So this thermal excitation of fluxes, it's a thermal disorder, very particular for the Kitaev spin liquid. Okay, with that, uh, what I want to say, the reason why uh, Kitaev spin liquid is also very useful for a ground is because uh, there are materials which can realize this. And basically after theoretical proposal of uh, Alexei Kitaev, this field become uh, really uh, both theoretical and experimental uh, field of study due to the seminal paper of Jack Kelly and Haliulin in 2009, where 
they show that this model can be realized in real materials. And uh, basically what you need for this is a strong spin orbit coupling, which will allow for the formation of pseudo spin degrees of freedom, which can interact uh, via bond dependent interaction. So I will not go to the details once again, by now it is uh, known, but what is important that now it's uh, a lot of different materials which considered to be cationic materials because the strongest interactions in these materials are cationic interaction. However, in these materials, so here's the list uh, of materials. This is from uh, Simon Trapp's um, uh, recent review. Uh, you can see that in most of these materials, uh, they order below a certain temperature. And here, for example, that can be seen in the behavior of the uh, specific heat. And that comes due to residual interaction because residual interaction are allowed by symmetry and nature is such that whatever is allowed is happening. Uh, and then there is another uh, class of materials which either show significantly lower ordering temperature or do not show it at all. And these materials are more frustrated and they're more frustrated because of the presence of disorder, this external disorder quench in the form of the quench disorder. So, uh, so Takashi just mentioned this compound, I'm not going to discuss it, but among uh, disordered materials, perhaps the most studied one is hydrogen intercalated lithium iridate. And in this compound, no long range order has been observed down to very, very low temperature. So here is uh, this paper, which I'm mentioning. So this is from the Takagi's group. And uh, as I said, uh, this compound was studied from various perspective and already in the first paper, it was shown that uh, like NMR and other probes show that there is no long range order down to like 0, 0, 005 Kelvin. This is very, very low temperature. But in addition to that, uh, it shows a non ketyaf like and not magnetically ordered system like specific heat. It shows actually divergent specific heat with some power law divergence. And then the question is why it is uh, happening. Another interesting uh, feature which we need to uh, explain is that this upturn in the uh, specific heat, which should come from the uh, pile up of the low energy excitation is quickly uh, suppressed by the field. So already the weak field of uh, one Tesla is Suppressing, suppressing this upturn. So this is basically the question which we are going to address in this talk. Okay? But uh, before I present our result, I want to say that uh, was many papers already devoted to this question, but the study of disorder in the Kitaev spin liquid actually started with uh, a papers in the group of uh, Choker. Uh, this is the PhD thesis of uh, and the Willems. And uh, you see there are many uh, different contributions. Perhaps I forgot some of them. Uh, but let me tell about our contribution. And uh, the main driving force in this project was Dan Hankau, who is uh, my student. And this work was done in collaboration with Johannes Knolli, Rodrich Mersner, and Gabor uh, Halsch. So and here are the references if you would like to know uh, some more details about our work. So let me start how we describe our disorder and what kind of effect we can see uh, uh, when we consider disorder in the ketyaf spin liquid. So once again, this is the uh, pure model. This is the zero flux. And already in the pure model, when all couplings are the same, we can have some uh, thermal disorder in the form of uh, the random flux. But we can also introduce some uh, quench disorder, a weak disorder, and that can come in the form of the bond disorder. In that case, there is a certain uh, number of bonds which has a different coupling strength. So everywhere it's J, that is this solid lines. And on the dash line, you have the coupling J prime. And another uh, type of disorder which we are considering is uh, the vacancies. And we can consider two types of the vacancy that can be uh, two vacancies where around a certain site, this J prime coupling to the rest of the lattice is equal to zero. In that case, we call true vacancies. 
And if J prime is not zero, but uh, small, then we can call it uh, quasi vertices. What is important to remember, we do not necessarily mean that we need to take the spin and take it out. We are interested in the coupling to this. And in principle, this vacancy can uh, happen when in the um, iridium, for example, we will have the six electrons which will fully occupy T to G orbitals. And basically we'll just have uh, the uh, pure, uh, with the true vacancy due to this uh, spin equal zero on the side, okay? So, and then another um, question which we want to answer is what kind of uh, physics we are going to study in the presence of this type of disorder. And disorder effects can come in different form. So first disorder can induce a certain uh, flux structure. So basically it can leave maybe to the glass of this uh, different flux occupation or a periodic structure. But we can also study uh, other effects. So since in the Kitayev model, the fractionalization happens into fluxes and non-interacting Majorana fermions, disorder in the Majorana fermions is a very uh, uh, good playground for such effect as Anderson localization and also uh, the Lipschitz tail. We can also study the Lipschitz tails. And this is interesting how in the uh, concept of fractionalization, the two ideas of uh, Anderson about the uh, quantum spin liquid and localization uh, came into uh, play. And then uh, I'm not going to talk much about this because I don't think I will have time. We can also study uh, various critical phases and universal behavior in uh, this uh, model. And that is especially when we consider the case of the strong disorder in this model. Okay, so let me start with the weak disorder and consider what is the difference between bond and side disorder. Okay, so first, how we describe the disordered Kitayev uh, model, uh, we uh, use Majorana fermion representation according to uh, Kitayev, and in Majorana fermions, uh, the model is written like this, where uij is the bond variables, which here are, uh, we can define on the link. So now the difference is that Jij depends on the bond. And uh, for the bond disorder, we can consider, for example, a binary bond disorder when there are only two values of J, J and J prime. But we can also consider the uniform uh, bond disorder when Jij is taken from uh, this distribution. Okay? So um, we can also, if we want to consider vacancy, then we can define, we can divide this uh, first term into two type of the terms, those in the regular places and another the second term is around the vacancy. And then this J prime will represent this J prime, how the central site in the vacancy is coupled to the rest of the system. We will also discuss the effect of magnetic field, but we want to stay in the exact solution. So therefore we mimic the effect of magnetic field, for example, the most important effect of time reversal symmetry breaking with the help of free spin interaction, which in terms of uh, this is how the magnetic field can be treated uh, perturbatively. And once again, that was shown already in the original uh, paper of Kitayev that this is the dominant uh, contribution when you treat magnetic field uh, perturbatively. And in this case, we have the CICK this is the hoping of the Majorana fermion on the second neighbor, but these U are still a uh, conserved uh, quantity. Okay, so this is basically maybe for students who never saw this, is how this uh, perturbative treatment of magnetic field is happening. But the idea is that this is the dominant term which has three operators, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. So you act with sigma i x on this side, and then you introduce this pair of fluxes here, then you act with sigma y, and then you move these uh, two fluxes here. So basically you again create, change the w on this, and that's why it goes to the original plus one uh, for the plaquette operator and the fluxes are moving. And then you go, you act with the uh, sigma j z operator, and you go back to the original flux configuration. In our case, it's flux three configuration. What is important when we act with this uh, term to our Majorana term to our system, 
uh, if we are, for example, in the uh, in the gapless uh, limit where we do have uh, direct cones for the Majorana fermions, uh, this copper interaction open the gap for the bulk fermion, and that would be important uh, for uh, in my talk. Okay, so and basically with this second neighbor hoping this model looks like a Haldane model. Okay, so uh, once we have a disorder, it's not a pure model anymore. We can not solve this model in the momentum space because momentum is not good quantum numbers, but the model remains exactly solvable in each of these flux sector. And basically what we do, we diagonalize the Hamiltonian in the real space, and that can be uh, done very straightforwardly using a uh, single variable decomposition. So after diagonalization, we can write the diagonal Hamiltonian for Majorana fermion in each of the flux sector in the complex fermions. And what is important that here, this uh, Bn is basically these energy levels. And I was showing this uh, in this one of the introductory slides. So now we have, again, the diagonal forms in terms of the Majorana fermions, but obtained through the digitalization in the real space. However, we can go to rather big lattices because this is nothing else as the hopping uh, Hamiltonian for Majorana fermions. Okay, so now bone disorder, how we can characterize it. So here the system size is uh, 40 by 40 by two. So this is the cluster and uh, everything is average over uh, 2000 random realization. Uh, density of states. On, on the background of each of these plots, what is shown is uh, the density of states of the pure model. And what you see there that it starts like uh, uh, as a power law here. So it's proportional to omega, it's a gapless density of states. And this peak corresponds to the Van Hoff singularity known. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's the same as for uh, graphene. So now in blue, what we show is the density of states for the bond disorder. So rho corresponds to the number of, what is the density of bonds which are changed. So for example, here 10% of the bonds has coupling J prime, uh, which is half of the, uh, other, uh, of the coupling on the other bonds. So, uh, uh, and then we can see that uh, basically this kind of disorder is changing the density of state, but not by much. So basically by blue everywhere, uh, shown is the density of states for Majorana fermion in the zero flux uh, set. And then what you see is basically that what happens is that the, uh, there is a transfer of uh, states from the Van Hoff singularity, either a little bit to the low energy sector or to the upper sector. What is important when we have a bond uh, disorder, then locally some of the fluxes uh, become very small. And therefore, there is no sense to uh, consider different flux configurations. So here we only compare uh, the zero flux sector shown by blue and the random flux sector shown uh, by, uh, by orange. So basically, this is the uh, a random flux. So this thermal disorder, I mean, it, it's T equals zero calculation, but it shows the random flux. And you see that random flux make significant changes in the uh, density of states even in the absence of the quench uh, disorder. But density of states is only telling us about uh, the states, it doesn't tell us about the localization. So in order to uh, discuss the localized nature of states, are the states localized or delocalized, uh, we can uh, use the quantity, which is called the inverse uh, participation ratio, this Pn, which can be defined for each eigenmode and here it's a sum over i uh, here in this, and this is the force power of this contribution in this wave function where n is the eigenmode and i corresponds to the size. So, and we sum over all the sides of our class. So if the most is delocalized, de de then all the sides give uh, the contribution or many sides give the contribution. And in this case, this inverse participation ratio, which is called IPR, is very small because this is proportional to one over n, where n is the uh, system size. However, when we deal uh, with the localized mode, only few sites uh, contribute and Pn becomes much uh, larger. This IPR is increasing. 
And if, for example, it's completely localized on one side, then uh, IPR will be just equal to one. So now everywhere here, it's shown by red, and you can see that low energy states are never localized. So first of all, in the bond disorder of this type, uh, we do not see uh, bond disorder does not give us the pile up of the low energy state in the neither in the zero flux sector and maybe a little bit in the uh, random flux sector if we consider this kind of binary uh, type of disorder, but it gives us some localization at the uh, band edge. And this localization is actually at the band edge is known as a uh, Lipschitz state. So here, let me quickly compare uh, the difference in the IPR in the case when we dop uh, the system with the weak bonds and the strong bonds. So when we dop it with the weak bonds, so we have a 10% of the bond, which is half of the strength, you can see that if you consider one of the high energy mode, so here, uh, Everything is measured in the units of J, so six corresponds to six uh, J. So we take one of the energy, one of the uh, high energy eigenmode, and we can see that it's actually delocalized. So it's basically distributing over many sites, and this has happened because at this energy, the bonds which contribute the most are the normal bonds, and these are ninety percent of the bonds, and therefore we have this kind of delocalization. However, if we contribute with the, if we dil dilute our system with the strong bonds with the J prime equal two, so then these minority of the bonds are the main contributors to the states around, uh, high, around the high uh, energy age. And uh, because this is the minority uh, uh, bonds, they are pretty localized in the area. So here basically it's a wave function uh, of the high energy eigen mode. And you can see that it's quite localized. And this is once again shown by uh, these values, increased values of IPR. Okay, so this, as I said, this is nothing else as a Lipschitz tails. And um, they these are the uh, Lipschitz like tails. These are strongly localized states which appear near the uh, band edge. And what is interesting that a uh, similar effect was already discussed in the original paper by Anderson in this first paper about single particle localization. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss our vacancies and quasi vacancies, which I will just put in the uh, formation of the side disorder. Okay, so as I said already before, in this case, we just separate the Hamiltonian in two parts around the vacancy and uh, uh, away from the vacancy. What is uh, important, and that was shown already in the first uh, paper by Willen said, oh, in 2010 and 2011, that uh, you can lower the energy of the system by attaching the flux to the uh, vacancy. So uh, basically, if you have uh, a, a vacancy, then the total energy of the system will be lower than uh, you attach the flux. And that is called as a flux binding. Do I have any questions? Okay, so basically in that case, the ground state of the system is not a zero flux state, but a bound uh, flux state. And what is also important is that around each of the vacancy, very similar to the graphene physics, you have a localized, very, very low energy modes, which is almost at energy equal to zero. So now with the green, this is the color decoding, is this uh, bound flux uh, sector. Um, so this is, sorry, it's, uh, it's a uh, zero flux everywhere, but it's a bound flux to the vacancy. So it's, uh, it's wrong, sorry, it's a type. What you can see immediately that in the low energy uh, in the presence of even very small density of the vacancies here is a 2% and here what is shown is a 5%. So A and B show the true vacancy because J prime is equal to zero and C show the quasi vacancy with a very small J prime, what you can see that indeed the states are depopulated from uh, Van Hoek singularity and you see the pile up of low energy state. In addition, what you see is that the IPR for this low energy state is uh, increased. And basically you can see that this 
low energy states are quasi localized. They're quite uh, different from the case of the zero flux sector and the bond uh, disorder. Okay, so now we will just think about the experiment which we're going to uh, explain. So the small uh, density of defects and the small density of defects already give us the uh, pile up of the low energy states. And in addition, these states are quasi localized. We also have uh, lifted cells in this case, especially for uh, finite J uh, here uh, in the case of uh, the quasi vacuum. Okay, so uh, once again, one more thing is just if you think for this low energy states, it's not fully localized, which is also shown by this IPR, but they are quasi localized and the wave function decay in the bulk like this. Uh, we can also consider uh, the, the vacancy in the presence of uh, the random flux sector as here. So this is the bound flux and this is the uh, random flux. And you can see that once again, you can have the pileup of the low energy states, but they're significantly less uh, localized. So uh, the conclusion for part one would be that uh, the bone disorder and the site disorder, they are very different. Uh, they, um, they basically preserve, if you look to the uh, density of states, then uh, th this is a weak disorder. So it doesn't change the density of states for all energies, but it can have a distant changes in the low energy physics. And another interesting thing that you can uh, discuss in the Kitai of quantum spinning, the ideas of uh, the Anderson uh, localization and Lipschitz uh, tests. With that, I want to quickly discuss the application of uh, uh, disorder in the Kitai spin liquids to the real materials, to this hydrogen intercalated lithium meridian. And once again, so you just saw a lot, you just saw a lot of kind of uh, NMR data. You see that there is no, almost no shift and no broadening in uh, this case. So that basically uh, was the evidence that it doesn't show any uh, long range order in this material. It's also remaining the insulator. And then you see this pile up in the uh, specific heat and then the suppression with the- Yes. I to have five minutes, including yes. questions. Okay. Uh, okay, so you see this uh, suppression and basically it was also some scaling behavior shown here. So what I want to say that, uh, the uh, small density of vacancies of quasi vacancies actually uh, can give you a very natural explanation to this pile up of the uh, density of states and this divergent behavior of C over T. Uh, so here basically uh, what we show that uh, when you have vacancies, then this pile up of the low energy state can be obtained both in the zero flux and the bound flux and the pure flux. So it's quite independent on the overall flux sector on the other uh, plaquettes, not around the vacancy. And what is also important that uh, we didn't find any universal behavior so far, but uh, when you go to a uh, bigger and bigger system, so it basically depends on the density of fluxes, but also on the value of G prime. But what is important that for each set of parameters, uh, you can reach this kind of the power law behavior uh, with increasing system size. So in this case, this power is 0 0.548, which is quite close to one half or minus one half, which was observed in the uh, experiment. Okay, so once again, so this is the effect of the vacancy that, as I said, uh, it's quite insensitive to the overall background uh, and therefore it's quite a robust physics that is very different from uh, the bone disorder. The remaining question which uh, remain to answer is why the suppression is coming. And here, once again, uh, what plays a very important role, uh, what is happening in the gap, which is opened by the magnetic field, what is the structure of the in-gap state in the presence of the magnetic field? So first, what we found is that when the copper is increasing at some critical value of copper, there is a transition between the bound flux sector to the zero flux sector, that means that there's not any more uh, preferable to attach 
or to bound the flux to the weapons. So now if we look to this density of state, so once again, it's the same type of plot. Here is for the bound flux sector for different values of copper, and this is for the zero flux uh, copper. So what is important is that we need to follow. We first at small copper, the ground state is this bound state. So you follow my stars here, and then we are going to the zero flux sector. And then you can see that the structure of uh, in-gap state change is very different in these two cases. So uh, basically what we need to understand, what is the structure of this in-gap mode in the, what are the structure of the spectrum inside the gap and this gap is proportional to copper. This is this uh, gap which is opened by, uh, by the magnetic field. In short, uh, when we, we are in the zero flux sector, we have two types of the modes around each of the vacancy. We call this the vacancy uh, mode, and this is this uh, mode which leads on the, if this is the A side, this is the B sub lattice, this is the quasi localized mode around the vacancy. However, when we have a flux uh, attached to this, then there is additional zero Majorana mode attached uh, to the flux, and we have three types of the low energy mode. So once again, we consider some toy model and I, I need to speed up. And once again, basically we can mimic in a very simple way, the interaction between these two different vacancies, which in the zero flux sector, each has two low energy degrees of freedom. And then the coupling uh, inside the vacancy mu is proportional to J prime. And this coupling between the vacancies is proportional to the distance between uh, the vacancies. And uh, we see that when the field is increasing, the gap is getting bigger and bigger. And then uh, at kappa equals zero, we have some zero mode, but then the gap is opening here. And therefore we have less and less um, uh, in-gap state around uh, zero energy. Okay, so this is basically the minimal model and we can write this model because all these modes are quasi localized. So basically we can, uh, when the gap is rather large, we can write uh, this uh, simple toy model which describes the behavior of in-gap spectrum. And uh, when we have a bound flux sector, as I said, in this case, we have this additional mode and this additional mode, even when the copper is growing, it still give us this uh, state around uh, energy equal to zero. And these states really contribute to the thermodynamic quantities like specific heat. So in short, what is happening is that when copper is small, when the magnetic field is small, we still have these low energy states. And that's why we see this uh, upturn in the uh, specific heat, but then we transition into the zero flux uh, state and basically we depopulate the state around uh, zero energy. And this is basically the numerical results. And once again, though not directly, we can still describe the scaling observed in the experiment. Uh, so more details can be seen in this uh, paper. So the conclusion for part two is, uh, we believe that a small concentration of the vacancies in the Kitayevskan liquid uh, that leads, the, it can explain both the pile up of the low energy mode uh, and uh, which cause the uh, power law divergence in the uh, specific heat. And then it can also explain the suppression of, of with the magnetic field. So of course, everybody will ask, but in real materials, there are the uh, interaction. So basically, if the system is still close to the spin liquid, the presence of uh, other interaction will uh, still uh, preserve this uh, main uh, feature. So that will not be, as long as the flux gap is preserved and the quantum spin liquid state is preserved, the qualitative behavior will uh, be the same. But in order to do a more quantitative comparison, of course, a uh, more realistic model need to be uh, considered. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for taking a little bit longer. Thank you, Natalia, for the nice talk. Uh, so, uh, we have an immediate question by Yogesh online. Yogesh, please go on. And Hi, Natasha. Uh, thanks for the very nice talk. 
uh, my question is that your model has uh, mostly disorder within the Kitai plane, whereas in the H3 lithium, only the, so the lithiums within the Kitai plane are intact and the disorder seems to be only in the interlayer hydrogen positions and so on. So I am worried about the, uh, uh, how, how I understand your that? question. Yes, well, I think yes. I, I can answer right away. So yeah. basically, the idea is that uh, basically the coupling, so we put the effect of the interlayer hydrogen, and this is indeed the disorder, into the modification of the coupling between J effective one half models. And basically, that's why what I was trying to say, I don't need to take these iridium ions away from the system, away from the plane, in order, for example, to have this vacancy. And I do think mm -hmm. that uh, within this simple uh, description, vacancy are more, eff uh, more effective uh, to describe uh, the experiment than the bone disorder, okay? So, but it doesn't mean that the site is not there. That means that the site is either completely decoupled. So for example, if, on this J effective one half model. So it's basically five electrons on the T2G orbitals. There is a charge transfer. Mm -hmm. And in this case, basically additional electrons goes there. Then I have S I equal see. to zero. And right. for my five model, that is equivalent for the true vacancy. And perhaps it's not fully, so maybe there is a J prime. Of course, there is some other interaction, gamma interaction, K interaction, I'm fully aware about this. But what I want to say, this idea of vacancy does not mean to take the, to create the true vacancy. It's the vacancy from the spin sense, from the magnetic interaction sense. Thank you very much. Okay, so Arnob. Yes. Thank you for a beautiful talk, uh, Natasha. So uh, the first question is really a speculation that uh, can these uh, bound states that you have shown um, let's say in the um, uh, just uh, in the slightly diluted limit, can that be seen as some kind of a positive identification for the actual guitar physics in these materials? Should should those be something that we that experimentalists should be in search for by deliberately putting in some defects? I think so. I actually think so that this is basically this defect uh, technique can be very uh, efficient because in a sense you can also you can also think about the neutron scattering and you just try to think can I measure some correlation uh, uh, function some correlation due to defect and in fact um, so I mean I didn't talk about the dangling spin so if it's the Kitai spin liquid then in addition to that, there are dangling Majorana fermions, which are also giving some additional contribution because once you cut this interaction and if still fractionalization is in place, there is also the dangling Majorana fermions, which can play a role. So once again, without going into long answer, I do think that the presence of the defect, which is a weak disorder, and that's why it does not uh, change strongly the Kitaev's or spin liquid behavior in all energy scales, it's only modified in the low energy scale, but it modified at the low energy scale in a very particular way. So and I think that can be used to detect. Okay. Uh, That's great. I have another very quick question. So there is this uh, in ruthenium chloride. Uh, I rem don't know if you remember this paper, two-step gap opening by uh, Yuwa Nagai and Yukitoshi Motome and uh, Joji Nasu are also in that paper. So I wonder if you remembered that paper. So what they see using NMR is a very low lying mode, pretty low energy. And I was, uh, when I was looking at your simulations, I was wondering if uh, that's what that they are seeing. I, I should confess, I don't remember now exactly uh, this paper. So I don't know what you mean by two steps. So here, the only thing what I can say in the presence of the vacancy, we can have two types of the flux gap the flux gap around the vacancy and the flux gap in the bulk of the material. And that is two different energy scale. So, okay. but I probably need to look to this paper more precisely in order to answer. This. Yeah, I mean, they claim a two-step gap. I mean, that's uh, how the paper starts. 
So it's in the okay. I don't know if, uh, okay. but let me Thank you. do not say anything because I do not remember this right now. So sorry. Yeah. Th thank you. Hi, Natasha. It's uh, Ludovic. Um, Ludovic. Uh, thank you for the very nice talk and the impressive results. I was wondering, um, maybe uh, in your uh, in your calculation simulations, do you see any signature for possible spin glass transition with uh, any kind uh, of uh, disorder, like either bond disorder or vacancies? I don't think because we, we do not consider any dynamics. So basically the only thing what we do, basically we have uh, different ensembles and we average over these ensembles. So I don't think that we can uh, in this approach to see any, uh, um, okay. So basically I think we need to compute uh, other correlation function and uh, compute some dynamical quantities to see if there is a spin glass physics there or not. We didn't consider this, so we can discuss localization or not, but I don't think that we can address in that approach the spin glass physics. Okay, thanks. Uh, can I just make a comment? This is Shubro uh, before we move on to Yogesh. Uh, but I think that even if there is some spin glass, it won't be the garden variety spin glass because the gauge field is still defined. So it would be some exotic version of spin glass behavior. Yeah, but one can see it still in the dynamics. You still need to say, to compute some dynamics and probably if you use this ensemble, you can still try to compute uh, sure, sure. More, more calculations are needed to say something. Okay, uh, Yogesh, do you have one more question? Yeah, yeah just uh, uh, something small. Uh, so in the copper iridate, the, uh, uh, the disorder is real and in the Kitai plane. So uh, does your approach, uh, would it be able to say something about uh, copper iridate? Yogesh, I was thinking about your data, honestly, oh, okay. but it's so complicated that <laughs> uh, basically we didn't manage to, uh, to model it in a reasonable way. It's too many, you have a disorder in copper, you have disorder there. So it's too much disorder and it's very complicated compounds. So right. I'm sorry, we were not able to come with any uh, reasonable okay. theory for that. Right, okay. Okay, thank you. It's real, but this kind of simple yes. picture is probably not adequate. Right, right. Okay, yeah, thanks. Are there more questions online uh, here? Okay, if not, let's thank Natalia once more uh, for the nice talk. Thank you very much once again for yeah. being on my talk and to give me the possibility to present the talk. And thank again, you. hopefully we will have you sometime in future in person here. I certainly can. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.